It's Christmas in July with the new Not Too Shabby Rustic Christmas release. And today I'll be sharing how to make the first eight cards from Kendra's Card Challenge number 15 using sketches one through eight in the Christmas Tea Bundle. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and this month I'm guest designing for Not Too Shabby with their Christmas in July release and I'll be working with the Christmas tea bundle that you see here. It includes this 6x6 paper pack called Rustic Christmas along with a pack of coordinating ephemera and matching enamel dots. My pack of enamel dots are hiding somewhere in my craft room right now. I had to uh, rearrange some things for a party and I shoved them somewhere and I don't know where I put them. I'm sure that's happened to you guys <laughs> before. Anyway, these are the gorgeous patterns that are in this paper pack. I love that it has some solids or close to solid, you know, the faux glitter plus um, that green one, that light green one back there. Plus it has a couple of... Um, floral patterns with poinsettias and we've got these stripes here absolutely gorgeous and I love that it has coordinating ephemera it makes making cards super easy when you have uh, ephemera that's ready to go so oh I love this plaid also I'm going to go ahead and lay out all of the ephemera so you can see what all's included but there are a bunch of really gorgeous images there's also a few with some little doggies and the little girl with the Christmas tree in the background absolutely beautiful so I'm gonna use this to make my cards using Kendra's card challenge number 15 now, if you're not familiar with my challenges I'll link a video above that explains all about it but basically you can make 15 cards using six sheets of pattern paper and these are the patterns that I have picked out for my six sheets and then I'm gonna cut these off camera and show you how to put together the cards so um, I'm going to start with paper A. I've picked out this pattern with the pine cones on it. And I've also selected some matching cardstock that you see back there. But I went ahead and cut all of these out off camera. And so next I'm going to look at my sketches that's on the free printable. And I'm going to look at the measurements for all of the layers. So as you can see for this first card, it shows the measurements for the pattern paper and for the layers. And so my next step is to cut all of my layers and get my card bases ready. And then I'll decide how I wanna decorate the cards and then I'll put them together. But before I do, I wanna show this free printable that I created for Christmas in July. And it includes sentiment strips and circle sentiments. The fonts I used coordinate really well with this Christmas tea bundle. It has a variety of Christmas sentiments such as Merry Christmas, joy to the world, Christmas wishes, tis the season, sending cheer, season's greetings, merriest wishes, joy, peace and love, Noel, peace on earth, stay cozy, and Christmas blessings. And if you print these with a laser printer, you can foil these with toner foil and either a mink machine or a laminator, which is what I've done here. I don't know if you can really tell, but when I tilt it, you can see the shine. But anyway, I've got half that I fold with the green foil and the other half in red. That's why it's cut apart in half. Uh, but the first page has the sentiment strips. And then the second page that I have has the circle sentiments. And these are one and three quarter inch circles with a border. So you can cut these out and you really wouldn't need to layer them up since it has that border. But it's up to you. I also included two larger sentiments at the bottom. But in order to download the free printable, you just need to click on the link in the description box below. It will take you directly to the post on my Patreon page where you can join as a free member to get access to download it. All you need to do to become a free member is enter your email address. It's basically like signing up for a newsletter. Plus you can get some other card making inspiration there, but I promise I don't send out a bunch of stuff. But this is also where you can download the free printable for Kendra's Card Challenge 15 that I mentioned earlier and what I'm using to make my cards. This is also linked below. But I also wanted to show you that I used the negative foil part of uh, these sentiment strips on some white toner foil, which is really cool. And um, I wanted to be able to have, you know, the foil background with the white letters. And I just love these. So I'll be using both the regular and reverse foil sentiments on my cards today. But I did try this out on some black cardstock, and I foiled it with red foil, and it didn't really turn out. It's hard to read um, unless you tilt it, but I tried it with white foil too. 
and that didn't turn out but this um this one here turned out pretty good the ones on the bottom the sentiment strips didn't but I, I definitely can use the circles at the top so I went ahead and cut these up using my paper trimmer and my one and three quarter inch circle punch so that I would have plenty of Christmas sentiments ready to go for these cards and for future cards I hope to get a lot of Christmas cards made this summer so I'll have enough when Christmas rolls around I have the first eight cards all cut and ready to go and I'm going to show you the process of putting these together. This is card sketch number one and I have cut my squares for my layers and then I cut the smaller one in half for the layer on these triangle pieces. I decided to use some brown cardstock because I wanted to pull out some of the colors in that paper. I think the brown makes it stand out more. I tried the green but for this particular pattern the brown looked the best but rather than having just a white piece of cardstock the square piece in the middle there I took another piece of pattern paper from the paper pad this one with the light green on it and I cut this out and there's like this really light scripty font the words on it you can barely see but I'm looking at it closely because I want to make sure that it's glued down the right way and then I've got this beautiful ephemera that I'm going to use here the one with the little girl in front of the Christmas tree and I cut this sentiment out with a stitched banner die and it was barely wide enough so I'm going to try to cover up the top stitching there since it's not exactly even. Then I'm adding her on top and we'll pop her up with some foam tape. Now Challenge 15 launched on July 1st and things have been really busy around here. Not just with the challenge but with me personally also. My son is getting ready to leave to serve a two year mission in Brazil. And we had a farewell party last weekend. And my craft room is in my dining room, so it's open with no doors that I can close to hide my mess. So I had shoved a bunch of stuff into some bins to help hide my, my mess. And I somehow misplaced the enamel dots that go with this. So hopefully I'll find it and can put the finishing touches on these cards. <clears throat> and hopefully I'll be able to show you this in my next video when I show the next cards, 9 through 15. But I'm just finishing up card number one here. And I really love how this turned out. Isn't she beautiful? I just love this paper and ephemera. Okay, so for card number two, you don't have to have this brown layer. You could use this directly on the card base. But I just like the brown. Like I said, it pulls out the colors in the paper. Um, this sketch has four strips that you'll line up in the center. And I have this little puppy ephemera that I'm going to use in place of the circle. And then I'm going to add the little sentiment flag. Really quick and easy card to make. And I just think it's adorable. Not Too Shabby Shop is one of the prize super sponsors for Kendra's card challenges. And in case you didn't know, we offer prizes both monthly and quarterly to a randomly selected winner for those who create cards with the challenge and post them to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group. And at the end of each month, I randomly select winners, and there's tons of prizes to be won. And Not Too Shabby has been so generous for the past, I'm not even sure how long, for a while. Um, it's been a prize sponsor for my challenges, and um, I'm so grateful. I'll talk more about the challenge here in a bit. But this is card number two. Now I'm going to be working on card number three. I cut a brown four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel to fit directly on my card base. Now you don't have to do that again. You can just glue these triangles directly onto the card base. But I liked how the darker cardstock makes my triangles stand out more. And then I cut this oval piece out of another piece of that pattern paper using a stitched oval die. I think this light green pattern is a perfect backdrop for the different shapes on these sketches. And I'm going to try to stretch my pack of ephemera to see how many cards I can get out of this bundle. So I'm just going to use one piece of the ephemera, this beautiful teapot, and I'm going to put it in the middle. And then I'm going to make the sentiment strip into a banner by using um, my banner punch. And I decided to add some foam tape to the back of this ephemera just to give it a little bit more dimension. Now I do like to try to keep most of my cards flat because sometimes the post office can be like super what's the word um i don't know 
I don't want to say anal, but sometimes they want to charge you extra just for having a little bump on there. And um, I don't know if you know this, but postage will be going up on July 13th. So if you need to buy stamps, go buy them now. But anyway, this is card number three. Beautiful card. And now I'm going to be working on card number four. These two pattern paper strips are the same size and the sketch does not call for a layer to go behind them but I wanted to show you if I made it without this red piece it would give it a totally different look. But because I'm bringing in this foiled sentiment from the freebie I wanted to bring in some of that red foil as my layer. Now this rectangle in the middle is two by three inches and the layer is a quarter inch bigger but I chose to go with the green layer behind that to tie in the green strip across the middle. And then I'm just going to put a little teacup up in the top right hand corner. But back to what I was saying about Not Too Shabby Shop being a super sponsor. This means that a few members of my design team were provided products to be able to create with to feature in an upcoming video using the Challenge 15 sketches. And we will be having our Not Too Shabby Hop this Saturday, July 13th, and it runs through July 23rd. So I hope you'll hop along with us. If you're not familiar with what a video hop is, it's where you watch several videos that are usually all around the same theme or they're related in some way. And then you show some love to the creators by liking and commenting on their videos. For this hop, you'll have a chance to win a digital download prize from me for hopping along. So this finishes up card number four. On sketch five, I used the pattern paper strip and I'm going to layer this with red foil. And I'm using one of the red foil sentiment strips that I foiled from the free printable. And then I have a three and a half inch stitched circle. This piece is going to go down first. And then the strip goes on top toward the bottom of the card. And then the two smaller pieces, I'm going to make banners out of these. <clears throat> so to do this without a banner punch, you just take your scissors and cut a slit in the middle. And then cut from each corner up to the top of that slit. I'm not very good at cutting banners by hand. That's why I like to use my banner punch. But you could also use the corner of a square punch if you have one. That is something I've done in the past for this sentiment strip. I don't really want to mess it up, so I'm going to use my banner punch here. So I'm going to keep this card flat and just glue everything straight down onto card instead of using foam like I've done on the others but this is just another simple quick and easy card layout card number five okay so for card number six the pattern paper that this sketch calls for is first this bigger piece which should measure three and a half by four and three quarter and then it should have a layer that should be three and three quarter by five and then you're going to have a circle layer and then a pattern paper circle on top and on the sketch, it shows another circle in the middle, but I'm just going to use this piece of ephemera instead. And then for the strip at the bottom, instead of making it a banner, I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm not going to cut the little fishtail banners. I'm just going to keep this card simple. When I went to glue this down, I had a really hard time deciding which side of the paper I wanted to use because they're both so pretty. But I think that the green stripes make the beautiful teacup with the poinsettia in it stand out more. And then once I find my enamel dots, I'll add some to each side of that white sentiment strip. Another quick and easy card number six. This is card number seven and I used a red card base. This is actually Cherry Cobbler by Stampin' Up. The red matches this perfectly. And then this particular sketch calls for a decorative border of some kind. So I used a stitched scallop border and when I ran that through my die cutting machine. I guess it mashed the texture off of the green cardstock. So um, this is a piece of cardstock from Basil and it matches the paper perfectly also. But um, I'm going to put some peel off stickers on top of that to help hide that line that the die made. And just like the other card, I had a hard time deciding which side of the papers to use. I love the stripes and I love the plaid. I initially planned to use both patterns with the poinsettias, but ultimately I decided to go with the stripes in the end. Now the sketch calls for a layer on these strips, which you can do, but since I'm going to be using the peel off stickers at the very bottom, I'm just going to add one on each side of these pattern paper strips. This is one of the circle sentiments from that printable and I'm going to layer that up twice. 
one green two inch circle layer and then a two and a quarter inch circle layer from the red foil and this will help to tie together the shiny red peel off stickers and for this card i probably could have left off the ephemera and it would still be a beautiful card but i decided to add this one here with the tea and cookies so that it would look like a set which is what I'm working on making. I only have one more card to show you in this video, but I plan to show you the remaining seven cards, cards nine through 15 from challenge 15 in the not too shabby hop video in a few days. So I hope you will check that out. But this finishes off card number seven. Now for card number eight, this one calls for two pattern paper pieces, plus one that goes up in the top right hand corner as a banner. Actually, all three pieces are banners. And then this piece of regular colored cardstock is also going to be cut in a banner and that goes in between those two pattern paper pieces. I decided to use this joy piece love sentiment that I used the reverse foiling for. And I'm gonna have to put this dark green piece pretty close to the bottom in order for this to fit. Instead of cutting a full circle, I just cut the top of a circle out of some scrap green cardstock using my stitch circle die. And I did this so that I wouldn't have to make it level. By cutting the circle like this, it's already level. But because this die is slightly bigger than what the sketch calls for, I've got to make sure that this banner is glued all the way down at the bottom for this to fit. Now, even though I haven't added any embellishments or bling yet, I think these cards turned out really pretty. You'll have to let me know which card is your favorite down in the comments below. I've really enjoyed working with this beautiful Christmas in July release from Not Too Shabby, and I look forward to sharing the remaining cards made with this Challenge 15 in my upcoming video. I will have links to all of the products that I used in today's video down in the description box below. These are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. If you'd like to download the free printable of Christmas Sentiments, click on the link in the description box. Again, it's totally free to download. You just need to join as a free member to my Patreon to access it. Once you join, you'll also have access to download Challenge 15. The post with the Challenge 15 printable is pinned at the top of the page and it's free to access from July 1st through September 30th of 2024 until the next quarter's challenge starts. For more information about how the challenge works and to find links to previous challenges, visit my website, kendrascardchallenges.com. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and check out all of the other card making inspiration in the Not Too Shabby playlist that's created for this release. A big thanks to Not Too Shabby for allowing me to get creative with these awesome products as a guest designer this month. I hope you'll join me again for my next video Happy crafting! <laughs>